Samsung are a great hardware company, but they are terrible at marketing their software. They have intricate settings and features that are buried deep in the phone settings menus. And only the most intense of power users seem to know their capabilities and what you can do with them. Well, today I'm uncovering five of them and putting them on display for the world to see. Let's go. Hello everyone, welcome back. Tech with Benefits, Daniel here. We have five features to cover and lots of little stuff in those features to talk about as well. So let's not waste any time and let's dive straight into our first one, which is all to do with hotspotting. First one's a really easy one to do with hotspotting is if you want someone to connect to your hotspot rather than needing to give them your password all the time is you can just show them your QR code for your hotspot, scan it and they're connecting to it instantly. It's a real seamless, easy way of doing it. And you can even share that QR code to their phone as well. So you don't have to have them displayed on your phone screen. You can just set it to them. This is great for friends who mooch your data from you or even just for your, for your secondary device. Although there is a much faster way for that, which I'll go into a little bit later. The thing about hotspotting is obviously that will be using and consuming your mobile data. When you're at home though, you don't necessarily have mobile data turned on. So Samsung a while back had made it possible for you to actually share your Wi-Fi connection to someone else, effectively allowing your phone to be a pass through so they can connect to your internet using your phone. Where this really works is if you have too many devices connected to your main router, you can easily have your phone act as the center point for other people to connect to and they just connect to your phone and the phone shares the Wi-Fi connection from over here and outputs to other devices. It's almost like a, a network extender, if you will, because it then allows other devices to connect to your phone and shares the internet from there. The great news is with this is you don't even have to activate anything. It will just do it natively. The last one to do with hotspotting is auto hotspot. If you're in the Samsung ecosystem, this is fantastic. What this allows you to do is using your Samsung account, it will show your hotspot connection on any other Samsung device that has your account logged in. So for example, Tavis 9 Ultra, if you don't have the 5G version, if you have the Wi-Fi only, in the Wi-Fi list, there will be the auto hotspot. Plain and simple, you press on that, it'll activate the hotspot from your phone and connect to it. No passwords, nothing needed. It's basically just like connecting to a Wi-Fi network that you connect to all the time. What's also great here is you can add in family accounts. So if you've got uh, someone within your family that obviously wants to be part of that auto hotspot situation, add their Samsung account to the list and that will also bring them into the equation. We're moving on now to sound and sound is a big deal. Everyone either watches videos, listens to music. It's become a big part of the entertainment experience is having good sound coming from your device and just a good sound experience in general. Samsung has been innovating sound features for a number of years particularly around collaborating and sharing music with other people. The first one we're going to talk about is Music Share. Music Share was introduced with the Galaxy S20, which was back obviously in, in 2020. So three and a half years ago at this point. It's honestly been underutilized ever since it came out. So let's see if we can change that. The whole premise is to help you stream music easier and remove steps and remove the hassle of being able to stream music to a Bluetooth device. Let's let's paint a picture. You're driving and your mate in the other in the front seat wants to put on their playlist. It's annoying because then you have to unpair your phone, pair in their phone, and their phone will constantly be connected to whenever they get in the car. And it's just not something you kind of want to have set up. Music Share eliminates that. Basically the way this this works is any Bluetooth speaker, it's not just isolated to the car. If your main phone, so my phone is connected to a Bluetooth speaker, and someone wanted to play their playlist instead, they can connect to the Bluetooth speaker using my phone you, through Music Share. So in the Music Share menu on the phone, you enable it to appear like a, would, a Bluetooth speaker on someone else's list. And it sort of shows you, right? It shows you the Bluetooth speaker name via Daniel's S23 Ultra, for example. So I can connect to the S23 Ultra. It will then stream the music to that, which will then pass the music on to the Bluetooth speaker. It's a really great premise because it removes that barrier to, can I play my music instead? And you don't have to awkwardly say no. You still can, just at least this way, there's no reason not to, apart from you don't like their music. Separate app sound is something that's closely tied into this. Nothing is worse. Okay, that might be a slight 
over exaggeration then when you have music playing on a bluetooth speaker and you then want to browse social media whether it be shorts or reels or something along those lines then then that video overtaking the music on the speaker it's embarrassing and it can also disrupt the vibe of a party like who wants that in the separate app sound settings you can go in here and actually choose an app to play through the speaker and any other app would then play through the phone. So for example, if you're at the party and you're using Spotify to broadcast through the speaker, select Spotify to play through there. So then if you want to show someone a short or a video or have some sort of other audio playing, that will stay and come through the phone. The music will stay through the speaker. Let's check out exactly how this works. Devices. This would be amazing at a party. Like I said, you don't want to be that person that disrupts the vibe from the music stopping. And if you are playing music at a party, you want to do it through today's sponsor, the Transmart Bang Max. Transmart sent me out the Bang Max to check out ahead of its release yesterday. This speaker is packed full of features that you can take advantage of. Most impressively, it has an 18,000 milliamp hour battery that can give you up to 24 hours of playback. The Bang Max takes advantage of the battery size too by allowing you to use it as a power bank for your smartphones. Five hours to charge back to full is incredibly reasonable for a battery of this size as well. On the audio front, which is most important for a speaker, it puts out 130 watts of sound utilizing a three-way sound system. Two times woofers at 35 watt, two mid tweeters at 20 watt, plus two 10 watt tweeters alongside two passive radiators. Here's a sample of how it sounds. Honestly though, it's not even being done justice here in that sound sample you heard. Via the app, you can customize the equalizer and the lighting situation with five different EQ modes and customized EQ modes as well. If you had two of these, you could connect them together for the ultimate in stereo sound. My favorite feature with this is the ability to pair two different smartphones simultaneously and you have the ability to seamlessly switch between them. For my wife and I and our different playlist options, this is an amazing feature. It supports Bluetooth 5.3, which gives you a transmission distance of up to 18 meters or 59 feet. If you're still rocking a phone with a headphone jack or you, you have an adapter, you can use an auxiliary in. But seriously, Bluetooth with this thing is the way to go. A speaker like this is made for the outdoors and the Bang Max is IPX6 water resistant, so you can be confident if it starts to rain. The Tronsmart Bang Max goes on sale September 5th. Check the link in the description for more information and how to get one for yourself. And thank you to Tronsmart for sponsoring this video. Continuing on with the sound theme, let's look at Sound Assistant. I am near on convinced that no one is using this properly, or at all. And if you are, drop me, drop me a comment below and let me know how you utilize it. But let's go through some of the ways I like to use it first. It's an app of its own. So it's got features within an app, but it's also part of the good lock modules and experience as well. There is so much that can be done in here. I, I probably don't have time to go through all of them in this video. You can see the app is sort of sectioned off and broken down into the different compartments. So there's a lot to cover in there. I wanna start with the one that's absolutely my favorite, individual app volumes. In here is where you can add in apps that you want to be able to control the individual volume of separate to the standard media volume control on the phone. For example, if you wanted Instagram to launch at a specific level, you can do that. If you wanted it to launch lower than what YouTube launched at, you can control that in here. You simply add the app to the list, slide the volume to what you want it to be, and then when you open Instagram, it will adjust or change the media volume to suit that. But there's something that ties into this, which I'll go into in a moment, but that's basically how this works. And it can really help, again, similar to that situation room before, you don't wanna be launching your social media and have play a video at full volume when you necessarily just maybe wanna to listen to it quietly and read the captions. Like I said, there's something that ties into this and that's the sound assistant volume panel that you can customize heavily. But what you can do within this panel as well is you can then see the toggles for the different individual app volumes. So you can control the volumes of each app that will be playing sound and media. It's really clever. Another one within sound assistant is changing the volume step control. So at the moment you can see it goes down 10 at a time. So 190 
and just sort of goes down by that. But if you find that's too big of a jump down or too big of a jump up, you can bring this down and change it to incrementally go up a lot slower and down a lot slower. That way as well, like if you just want to control it a little bit more finitely, you have that ability to do so from within Sound Assistant. The last one I'll highlight here from a useful standpoint is the multi-sound function that's right at the bottom of the Sound Assistant. This function enables you to have sound playing from one app while sound is playing from another app at the same time. You might be questioning why you might want to do this, but with the individual app control volume, could make a lot of sense, right? Where you may be listening to music and then you want to be able to also play a YouTube video but not stop the song, you can do that. You can turn it on for an individual app, or if you hit the toggle, it'll just allow all apps to play over the top of each other. I don't mind it, especially if I'm in a very unique situation of watching two football matches at once. You can listen to the commentary on both. There's some interesting ones in here. The voice enhancer one was something I noticed. I'm not sure I'm ever going to use this. Basically, it just alters the sound of your voice, and apparently it will toggle on a notification to let you know that it can do it in real time. Yeah, I don't think you'll need this. If you want to prank people, maybe, but eh, just prank people the normal way. Two left. And this one I feel pretty passionate about. It's Samsung Keyboard. Now, I'm not, again, Samsung Keyboard has a lot of things that you can do in here, but there's two things in here that I think everyone should be at least using to change their Samsung Keyboard experience for the more positive. You should just be using Samsung Keyboard in general, not just because it has an actual number row at the top, so you don't have to keep switching to, to put in numbers. That concept is wild to me. Not just because as well it has an actual clipboard that allows you to go back and see things that have been pasted so you could access a history of copied things. Not just that, I'm talking actual extra features on top of that. First tie-in is to do with Grammarly. I am not someone who enjoys making grammatical errors when it comes to typing and Grammarly is really good at stopping me from doing that. The only thing is it's like stopping me even when I didn't think I made grammatical errors and I just can't stand seeing that green line up here and I have to fix it. So Grammarly really does is improving the ability to express myself properly with good words and good proper structure of a sentence. It's easy to turn on. It's in built into the keyboard and wherever you do your typing, Grammarly's there to sort of help it. That sounds sponsored. It's not. It's just really useful. The other thing within Samsung Keyboard that I want to highlight is the fact that it's actually integrated with YouTube and Spotify. Within the keyboard, you can actually search YouTube and immediately just copy and paste the link directly into the message that you're sending. So a lot of times with this, you, you go to YouTube, you find the video you want to share, you sh hit the share, but you're, for one, you have to open the video, hit share, copy URL, jump back into the message, paste it. This is different. This directly from the keyboard, you go into where you need to go, hit YouTube, search, select the video, it goes straight in. Done. Spotify is the same. Search for the song, bang, put it in there. Just remove some barriers and steps to making this happen. And when you can start to get it part of your muscle memory, it's so much more convenient doing it this way. The last one I've left is probably the most least fun, but also most practical feature on this list and it's caller ID and spam protection. There's two ways that this will work. The first is very simple. It will block and warn you of reported scams and fraud and uh, even warn you about telemarketers. The second is if you haven't got someone's phone number saved in your phone, it actually uses Hire and actually can display a business's number, which is really, really useful, I find anyway. I think it just sort of gives you some context as to what the call is that's coming through. Obviously, it requires that business to have been registered in that service, but if they are, it works really well. When I was writing this video and my points that I wanted to cover, I noticed something that's on my Fold 5 that actually isn't on my S23 Ultra. Bixby text call was something that was introduced with One UI 5.1 at the start of this year, but they've added to it since then. What I've noticed is you now have the option to create a custom voice. So you basically train a language model to learn your voice through saying lots of different sentences. It does some AI stuff in the background and then spits out a voice model. It's not great. You can hear my one here. Hi, I'm Bixby. I can help you chat to callers when you can't talk aloud. That doesn't really sound like me. So I'll try and do it again, I guess, or maybe see if it gets better with updates. Right now, it's probably not perfect, but 
you know, you, you can potentially have something that sounds a little bit like you versus something that sounds absolutely nothing like you. So anyway, it's in there. You can do what you want with it. Well, that's it for another week. Thank you to Transmart for sponsoring the video. Make sure you check it out. That link is in the description. Got a lot more planned, obviously, of course. So please make sure you like this video. Make sure you subscribe, hit that little bell icon. And between now and my next video, come follow me on Twitter and Instagram. See you next time. You! Yep.